All right, the first thing we got to do is test the uh, tubes. Okay, they baked for a little while, about 10 minutes. I can get a pretty good feel for where it's going to be. You know, if it takes it an entire hour to stabilize and get, I mean, it's worthless, right? If it's not, if it's not in a groove within 10 minutes, you need different tubes. So this 57 is now a 58, 59 is now a 60, and that's the same for... This last one is just a tiny bit high, so I'll just say 59 plus. We'll call it a strong 59. So we'll let those cool and then we'll put them in the uh, amp and uh, see what we can do with it. Okay, I put the output tubes in. Of the four that we had, two were a perfect match. So I put those over here so that we can see how that looks on the meters. And the other two that were close but not quite perfect are over here, uh, 57 and a strong 59. So we'll see if we can detect that difference uh, in the meters here when we fire this thing up. I'm just putting the speaker load on it, or the dummy load, whichever uh, we decide to use. Plug it in. Turn the volume down. Power it up. And then wait for it to warm up. I don't know uh, where the meters are, you know, set. And, um... When they come up like they are now, if they're not wildly different, it's not anything to worry about at the moment. We'll just let it warm up for a few minutes, and then we'll, we'll check out the meters and see where, where we land. And the meters are reading 60 mils, <clears throat> which is almost exactly what these tubes actually uh, tested at over there on the tube tester. Now we know these match, but let's pretend we didn't know they matched. How would we find out? The way you find out is you swing the balance control fully counterclockwise and see where the meters read. Now the right one is about 90 mils, or the, the left one, I'm sorry, is about 90 mils and the right one is about 40 and then swing the balance control fully clockwise and see if you get the same readings. And we do. So that tells us that the tubes are matched. This one's just just a sm touch over 40 and this one's just about 90. So we balance both meters and we land, we land right at 60, which is, which is great. Now this other side, we know that they don't perfectly match. And both sides are reading high. So we're going to turn the master bias control down. So that we get both tubes to read 60 mils. 
and it's really just that simple. And to see if they if they actually matched or not, we do the same thing. Flip it fully counterclockwise. This one's at a strong 90 and you know about 45. Swung the other direction. Yeah, it's about the same. It's close enough that you're not going to notice such a small difference. When the difference isn't small, it becomes quite apparent on the meters. And, you know, that's an indication that you should get a better set of tubes. Because I can tell you right now, if the tubes don't match, the power output is going to be limited by the weaker tube in the pair. Another thing that varies with the tubes other than power is harmonic distortion. And if we look at this uh, spectrum, which is in real time of both channels, the left and the right channel, we have set the output to one volt and we're at 0.7% total harmonic distortion. And that is calculated by measuring from the peak of the signal, which is this tall part. In this case it happens to be 528 hertz. To the near, you know, to the next highest peak, which is this one right here. Anything below the highest peak is completely ignored by this particular THD figure. So if we turn it up to 1 watt, it's important to know what the amp is going to do at 1 watt. And the distortion is jumped up to 0.8 and um, the higher harmonics have changed quite a bit. So you can see this is full power. That's with a 2 volt input. The volume control on the amps all the way up. Um, the waveform is just starting to clip. There's no notch distortion. And let's see, we're at 40 watts. And the distortion 